Today I have absolutely no remaining doubt that weak technical electromagnetic fields are able to cause harm to living organisms. I show you three of the most important results. Spatially inhomogeneous high frequency field distributions cause spatially inhomogeneous tree damage. You have to know that today the real high frequency field distribution is not uniform in a given space due to the interference of different high frequency fields from a very great number of high F transmitters. If I would here make a measurement, I surely would measure more than 100 high frequency fields from different transmitters and they superpose. The real high frequency field distribution is spatially inhomogeneous. Every 10 centimeter you have another field distribution because of the superposition from the reflection from the different uh, pos uh, situations. You see this tree is very inhomogeneous damaged. The top is more healthy than the left downside. This maple tree also direct in the uh, Federal Office of Radiation Protection is damaged very slightly. I have a lot of inhomogeneous damaged trees because not only the field strength is spatially inhomogeneous, also the directions of the field flows, the frequency components, the phase relation, a very important biological effect, the phase relation of bit, uh, different uh, wave, waves, the polarization and the modulations are different every 10 centimeter, every meter, every uh, kilometer. Here you see, because of the reflection of a sheet of iron, you see that this tree here cannot, is, is uh, sick and you want to grow under the iron. Here you can see a transmitter. Surely there are a hundred and more transmitters in the surrounding. But you see here an island of trees. And you see here strong damage and you see behind damage. The transmitter is probably one kilometer away. And here, this is a, a, some months later, a photograph. You see a typical transmitter, an ideal transmitter facing damage. The first is mostly damaged. The crowns are damaged. And you, the more you go behind and the more you go down, they are protected. This is strongly physically. But behind this island, the trees are affected again. And this you can explain with the, inter in the, um, with the diffracted uh, radiation. You must know the radiation, one gigahertz is 30 centimeter, and 30 centimeter uh, has a very strong diffraction effect. Therefore, the, the high frequency is like a flow of water. It comes here, a diffract around this island, left around this island, and right around this island and, to, and comes together in this area and there you have, because of the different wave uh, lengths, lengths of the way, you have sh uh, shifted phases and therefore in this area you have a turbulent field, I called, uh, where the trees are damaged again. Now I have a question if you have learned something from which side is the interference uh, radiation Affecting, can you imagine? From the left, you think? Yes, so I ha don't have to return. Volgende presentatie, die, uh, die spreker kan er helaas niet bij zijn. Dat is um, Dr. Uh, Goldwardy. En die is vanwege gezondheidsomstandigheden uh, niet in staat om hier te komen. Maar heeft zijn presentatie opgenomen op film. Dat komt. Hallo, ik ben Andrew Goldsworthy. Ik ben een retired lecturer van Imperial College London. En toen ik daar werkte, voor veel jaren, een van mijn pet interests was hoe animals en planten 
electric currents, that is natural electric currents that they generate themselves and use for all sorts of purposes. Now, first let me explain a little bit about how electricity flows through plants and animals. It's carried by ions, that is electrically charged atoms and molecules that flow through their cells. Now, these currents are generated by ion pumps in the cell membrane that drive ions through the membrane using metabolic energy. This is a typical bacterial cell. It's surrounded by a membrane and it uses its metabolic energy derived from its food to pump hydrogen ions, positively charged hydrogen ions, out through the membrane. This generates an electrochemical gradient and some of those hydrogens are let back in again and their energy is used to generate ATP from ADP. Now ATP is the main energy currency of the cell. And it's also used to pump nutrients into the cell against a concentration gradient. So the energy of the hydrogen ion gradient is used for two main purposes, that is to generate ATP and to pump in nutrients. These are, of course, um, delivered electrically. And there is an electrical circuit carrying these hydrogen ions round and round and round. And as you can imagine, the insulator has to be very good, that is the cell membrane. If anything happens to make that membrane leak, then it short circuits the whole system and none of the processes will work properly, if at all. We've already seen that plant cells use DC currents extensively, but not alternating currents. Alternating electromagnetic fields damage cell membranes by removing structurally important calcium ions and it results in the cells leaking. This was first discovered in the 1970s by Suzanne Borwin and her co-workers in Ross Aidey's lab. I can explain briefly uh, why this loss of calcium is important. Cell membranes consist of negatively charged components which are held together by positively charged calcium ions. Uh, it's rather like the bricks in the wall are held together by the cement in between them. The positive ions hold together the negative membrane components. If you take some of this calcium away, the membrane becomes weaker and more inclined to leak. Now, this sort of leakage can short circuit the membrane potentials that we have already seen and reduce the efficiency of energy production and energy utilization, and perhaps also disrupt the orderly growth of polar cells. But perhaps the most serious effect of membrane leakage is through the membranes of lysosomes and vacuoles. Lysosomes in animals, vacuoles in plants. Uh, this is because these organelles are membrane bound and they contain various toxic materials and also digestive enzymes that are normally used to recycle unwanted materials. 
and these enzymes include DNAs which destroys DNA and it's already been shown that mobile phone radiation uh, can shatter the DNA of animal tissue cultures in a matter of hours and this leads to mutations loss of function and possible cell death the same may be true of plants but what is happening to our trees the bark seems to crack and the cracks get infected and you get cancer-like growths phloem nodules just underneath the bark is there any explanation for this well possibly there is if as the work with conditioned water suggests there is an initial stimulation of growth that may not be a good thing because you would expect the areas to grow are those which are already programmed to grow and are growing such as the cambium which divides to increase the girth of the tree well if this happens too fast then the tree increases its diameter too rapidly and the bark cracks and this could result in foreign organisms getting in and causing infection but what about the nodules well I can tell you what may happen here based upon what we know about tissue cultures plant tissue cultures can be made by putting a piece of plant onto a culture medium containing large amounts of growth hormone and you find that the cut edges grow out as a form of callus which continues growing indefinitely as a sort of undifferentiated mass so long as there are large amounts of growth hormone present if you remove that growth hormone by putting it onto a fresh culture medium the mass starts to differentiate into what looks remarkably like your phloem nodules a little bit of vascular tissue surrounded by so callus like tissue now is this what is happening in your trees could it be that the initial stimulation of growth involves the production of large amounts of growth hormone which produced this sort of callus like structure under the bark in the phloem and when the growth subsided and you hit the inhibitory phase then they began to differentiate and you see what we now see as phloem nodules this is just a guess but it fits with what we know Het komt wel aan dat we vanavond of vandaag in ieder geval, en vanavond ga je er allemaal over nadenken van hoe is dat dan allemaal gelopen vandaag, dat we heel veel informatie hebben gekregen. En de informatie die u allemaal tot u genomen hebt, die, ja, daar zitten natuurlijk nog heel veel vragen in. Dat is ook zo. Er is niemand, en dat durf ik hier te zeggen, die zich echt klip en klaar hard uitgesproken heeft. En dat kan ook nog niet. Want juist deze dag was bedoeld om de verschillende denkende richtingen bij elkaar te brengen. Dat wil zeggen van nou, 
hoe het er toch met elkaar is over gaan praten. We hebben een maatschappelijke verantwoordelijkheid als het gaat over onze leefomgeving, maar ook over onze bomen. Ik zou eigenlijk bijna willen zeggen, wie vindt dat er niks aan de hand is? Die steken er elkaar op. U weet wat dat betekent binnen voetbal. Ik zie geen rode kaart. Dus hiermee zeggen we eigenlijk toch vandaag met elkaar, we moeten er wat aan doen. Dit kunnen we ons niet zomaar laten gebeuren. U bent hier allemaal enthousiast, allemaal belanghebbend, het zij met werk, het zij privé of het zij zakelijk, om het zomaar te zeggen. Maar ik vind dat hierin natuurlijk de Rijksoverheid en zelfs de nog hoger de Europese overheid een daadwerkelijke maatschappelijke verantwoordelijkheid dient te nemen. Thank you.